Hi, this is Andy, M6JKA. Now, a lot of people have been talking about DMR recently, and we've done quite a few videos on the subject, particularly for amateur radio usage. And, um, you know, one of the hot new sort of subjects at the moment is um, a DMR hotspot. Now, um, a German, some German amateurs have come up with this. Uh, it's basically a, a little USB dongle, which, um, you know, allows you to access the DMR network from a DMR radio um, a bit like you can access the D-Star network um, where you run a small hotspot at home and you can basically walk around the vicinity with a, with a D-Star handheld and uh, access um, you know, reflectors and all sorts of things that way. And a similar thing is going to happen with um, DMR. They've already released this um, uh, little, it's called a DV4 Mini. Um, and basically, uh, yeah, they've already released it to the, to the German market and it's, um, it's coming along soon um, to the rest of the world. So, you know, we, um, we're kind of following this quite closely. This is, this is the website here um, about it. You can probably see the URL from, uh, from the video. But, um, I mean, these guys have, have done a lot of work with, um, you know, Digital Voice. And, you know, there's some other projects as well. But this, this is really quite uh, interesting because it allows you to set up a DMR hotspot at home, um, you know, and connect it to, a, to an antenna as well and sort of get kind of local coverage. Um, I do the same with um, with a small hotspot um, in my local area, and uh, you know I can I can sort of cover a very very small part of my town, um, and uh, you walk around with a D star handheld and, and get on to that, onto all the um, reflectors and everything else. So it's it's very useful, but the, obviously the DMR radios. I mean, some of the DMR radios, um, one of the DMR radios that I've got is actually very very small. You've probably seen it in other videos. Um, so it would be lovely to be able to take that out and about and be able to um, get onto uh, some of the reflectors. Now, you know, if you're in the UK, there's a few repeaters around, um, but, you know, it's by no means sort of solid coverage around the UK yet. So um, it's pretty difficult. I can't get into any of the repeaters, the, the full-blown DMR repeaters, um, you know, from my location, um, you know, even using the sort of big antenna and, um, and everything else. So... You know, something like this is going to be great as a stopgap for the moment um, until the DMR repeaters, um, you know, start to start to come in full force. Um, you know, that being said, it, it is starting to happen. You know, they are starting to um, be quite a, quite a few repeaters coming online. Um, you know, and in good locations as well. There was an initial surge in the UK really of repeaters um, where people were putting them in their houses and. You know, running them from their home QTH, which is fantastic because it allowed the network to kind of grow. But obviously, we all crave the um, repeater on the on the mountain top or um, on the top of a very high, large building so that we get um, solid coverage, a bit like the FM repeaters. So yeah, I mean, basically, this is um, this is really kind of exciting news. But I took I decided to um, have a look and dig a bit deeper because on on the website here we've actually got. A link. There's a picture of this plugged into a, a Raspberry Pi. We've got a link down the bottom here, which gives you a link to the software. So it's actually possible now. But even though um, I sh should say we haven't got the, the DV4 Mini stick yet, because um, they've only started selling it to the German market, and I think there's going to be a few released next week. This is kind of the second week of August uh, next week, and they're saying it's it's about to ship. So excited about that. But meanwhile, I thought well, what I'd do is um, we'd give a little test of the software because um, basically you've got here, if you're looking, we're interested in the Linux version. It runs on Linux and Windows as well. Um, you know, so it's possible to use this little USB stick plugged into any computer pretty much and it'll give you the, um, give you the hotspot. Um, but what, what we sort of decided to do, um, because obviously our... Well, our, our kind of business really is um, is ARM-based Linux PCs. So the idea was, if we can get this software running on um, on one of our boxes, it would be um, be quite fantastic because um, you know some of our little uh, mini embedded PCs are actually a lot more powerful than the Raspberry Pi and Raspberry Pi Two. Um, so I'll show you the the device we're talking about. So this is like a V5. Uh, Rika Magic V5 Linux edition mini PC. Now you can see it's pretty small. It's going to be quite ideal for the um, for the DV4 mini because you can just use this 
USB port here, um, you know, to power uh, to power the device and actually obviously connect it to the to the um, to the to the computer. Um, so this is a quad core um, RK three two eight eight, incredibly powerful um, mini PC, probably on par with like an Intel Atom uh, Z thirty seven thirty six. If those of you know what that is, um, basically it's just capable of, of running proper sort of PC desktop PC um, type applications. So it won't stutter or anything like that with um, um, you know things like uh, uh, when you try and run certain things on the Raspberry Pi, it really doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't you know deliver. Also, what's interesting, we've got a gigabit Ethernet port on here, so that's going to be really useful for radio networking um, applications because. You know, you just need the fastest network connection you've got, um, and you've also got um, 802.11ac uh, networking capability on on here as well, which is going to be going to be you know much needed for um, for for kind of the streaming side of um, of the software. Anyway, so what we did was um, basically grab the software from here, uh, no big deal on that, and um, now this runs. This is the Linux. You know the desktop Linux we're running on here, which is Ubuntu 14.10, and um, we had to compile the um, the mono package, which allows you to run this software. And this is like a it's it's like a um, a .NET application, I think, because um, you're still running an .exe file in Linux. So you know, basically, it's running an .exe file like a 32-bit Windows file, but the package mono allows you to run the software. Um, now, you know, it, on the website, it, the instructions for the DB4 Mini say, you know, you, you've got to compile that, you've got to compile this software, and um, you know, you've got to compile mono, um, and it's not, it's not rocket science, but they also say it's going to take about three, three hours on a Raspberry Pi or something like that. <laughs> well, we did it on this and it took about 25 minutes. So that gives you an idea of the um of the speed of, you know, the speed of this. But um, you know, basically you have to compile it all and set it set it all up. Um they do provide a Raspberry Pi image, I think, like a SD card. But that brings me on to the next thing because this is obviously a fast mini PC. Um once you launch the program, the first thing you notice here is you've got this um CPU usage thing. Now this is a pretty quick PC. But it's still saying twelve percent, and it's not actually doing anything. Um, so, you know, it makes me wonder if this is even going to run on a Raspberry Pi standard at all. You know, a Raspberry Pi one, whereas everyone's used to running their DV hotspots on, you know, digital uh, D-Star hotspots on standard Raspberry Pi. You know, it makes me wonder if this is going to be possible because this is almost like a um, an emulation. I think. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, people out there, you kind of we're running an ex, exe file in um, in Linux using Mono, the Mono package. So yeah, there you go. Anyway, but basically, here's a quick little tour of the the, the software um, that they provide. Now we can't obviously use it because we haven't got the dongle yet, but um, it doesn't stop us taking a little peek and seeing you know how it works. Um, so first up, you've got personal settings there. This is your ID you put in for your DMR. So basically, your DMR you have to register for. Um, to use the DMR network for amateur radio, and they'll give you this this code here, which you normally put in your radio, and of course you you put it in here as well, and it automatically populates your call sign, um, and then you can select the module you want on here. Uh, I can't remember the exact numbers, but uh, basically for for UHF or VHF hotspots. Now I've already got a D star hotspot, so I'll probably just use another letter, um, you know, so that it it differentiates on. Um, I don't know if this goes through to APOS, but it, it will be a way of differentiating between the two. Then you put in your location, your city, your um, and your locator automatically comes up. I think that may be coming from um, your call sign or something like that. Anyway, um, you've got the DV settings here. What's really interesting about this is you can see D-Star, DMR plus and C4FM, which is Yaesu Fusion. So, you know, my... FT2D is no longer going to be um, <laughs> no longer going to be sitting there redundant um, in terms of the digital side. I still use it for FM because uh, it's fantastic. But um, yeah, so that that will be um, that will be really good. Now that's quite a new development. No one else has got 
a fusion hotspot, let alone a D DMR hotspot. So um, this is looking good. Um, so then you set your RX and TX frequencies there. I presume you push have to push that press that button to send it to send the data to the um, to the dongle. And then on here you've got DSTO reflectors, so you can connect to all your famous all the famous DSTO reflectors, DCS, Five, Bravo. Um, apologies for the shaky hand. I'm having to hold this camera. Um, and um, you've got the DMR reflectors here. 4400 is the UK one. Um, you know, it's not letting you select anything there, obviously, because I think it's not connected. And you've also got um, C4FM, you know, your fusion um, uh, reflector there. First one ever, I believe. Um, yeah, so you can't connect or do anything really because the dongle's not there. You can see this pole in the way down the bottom saying, trying to find it. Um, what it does is it connects your DV Mini, basically connects, you know, your DV4 Mini, basically connects um, via, uh, via USB, but I think internally it's got a, um, a USB to serial converter. So in effect, you're, you know, you're, you're having to use um, the Linux built-in Linux driver. Um, you know, we've got, we've tested this and it's all our current software for, for our mini PCs have all this built in already so you can just plug the dongle in it's a bit like an arduino you can plug an arduino straight in and it will just recognize it because all the drivers are there already so you haven't got to faff around with with drivers or anything like that we're hoping we can just get the dongle once it finally gets delivered and just plug it in and um, and get going straight away and using it on this sort of device means that you know it's going to be very very low power um very small doesn't make any noise because there's no fan in it um, and you know everything else it's, it's going to be going to be pretty cool so we've got another bunch of settings here as well you can remote control which looks quite interesting so you can remote control um, your hotspot station uh, which is going to be quite useful and um, obviously this UK mode for UK licensing you're not allowed anyone else to connect your um, to your hotspot um, other than your your own call sign so we really should be click, um, clicking that one um, to abide by the conditions. But I mean, this, this uh, hotspot is, is running about 12 milliwatts. So when we finally get this hotspot, it's gonna be running about 12, you know, maximum power is 12 milliwatts. So it's, it's not really gonna to get too far anyway. Um, and, you know, we've got, uh, I think you, you can do firmware updates and things like that. There's a, um, there's a repeat uh, uh, RSSI signal strength indication there It'd be quite good to, to see like a log file of um, everything happening um, so this is really interesting I mean this software feels nice and smooth to to um, to use you know the CPU usage obviously makes me wonder a little bit how how it's going to run on anything other than you know something with a bit of a, a bit of CPU horsepower but you know we'll, we'll have to see how that works but we're very interested in this and hopefully um, very soon we'll get the dongle and we'll be able to uh, be able to test it all out. So that's that so far. And um, yeah, again, what we'll probably do is um, uh, through the cloud stove store is, is offer a device like this with everything installed, with everything pre-installed. So pretty much all we've got to do is just plug it in. Another thing about this as well, I will say, is um, this uses a two and a half amp power supply. Not that it actually needs that power supply to, to run, um, but what it means is, is it just means that that extra power is going to be powering, obviously, the hub, which is the USB hub internally, which is going to give you more power for your, um, your, you know, your DV4 Mini. They reckon it's going to take about 180 milliamps um, on transmit. So, you know, I mean, it's not a lot of current, but really you need the headroom in there. Um, to do that now, you know, this device comes with everything anyway. It comes with a power supply it comes with um, you know, your connected connection lead for HDMI um, You know USB lead and everything else and it runs Linux from internal flash There's no SD card. You just turn it on and it basically boots up Ubuntu 14.10 So I mean you can use this software obviously for the DV4 mini and you can use um, You know a host of other things on, on here as well it's kind of going off tap off on a tangent, but Everything is possible on this um, on this actual uh, on this 
on this mini PC. So if anyone wants any more information on that, just give us a shout. Um, but it just means that um, we're going to have quite a good solution for um, you know radio networking with uh, you know creating DMR hotspots, reliable DMR hotspots with um, high high speed Ethernet. Um, you know, and of course it's all in a box packaged. You don't have to buy an extra. Um, you don't have to buy an extra case for your, as you would do with your Raspberry Pi or Odroid or anything else. So, there you go. Um, rambling on again, but um, quite interesting developments. Hopefully we'll have a DMR hotspot up and running um, very, very soon. So, thanks for watching. Um, questions again, anyone uh, wants to ask anything, just um, post them in the comments and we'll get to them as soon as we can. From M6JKA and um, 73s for now.